H2SO4 is a strong acid. And why do I say that? It ionizes completely in water. That is the answer to 7.1. H2SO4 is a strong acid. It ionizes completely in water. That is the reason. And then taking a look at 7.2, write down the formula of the conjugated acid base pair in step two okay so let's take a look at what is happening here uh, the balance equations below represent the ionization of water of sulfuric acid in water step one and step two so what we need to give is the acid base conjugate pairs in step two so let's take a look at the reaction we have hso4 minus plus h2o this gives us h3o plus plus SO42 minus. So acid base conjugate pass. All right, let's start with HSO4. In the products, we have SO42 minus. So clearly we can see that HSO4 minus donates a proton to become SO42 minus. So because it is a proton donor, it is an acid. And then what is left after an acid donates a proton is the conjugate base so there we go and then on the other hand h2o will be our base as it accepts a proton to become h3o plus so this is a conjugate acid right it's the ion formed after a base accepts a proton so our acid base conjugate pairs hso4 minus and SO42 minus that is an acid base conjugate pair and H2O with H3O plus that is how we answer 7.2 7.3 H2SO4 is diprotic write down the meaning of the term diprotic so let me show you what we mean when you say H2SO4 is diprotic so H2SO4 can give us 2H plus plus SO4 2 minus. So for 1H2SO4, it can donate 2 protons. That's why we're saying that is diprotic. For instance, HCl that can only donate 1 proton would be called monoprotic because for 1HCl, we have 1H plus. But with H2SO4, Clearly, we have 2H+, plus, so we refer to it as being diprotic. There we go. That is 7.3. Let's take a look at 7.4. 7.4, write on the formula of the amphalite in the above reaction. So, an amphalite, an amphiprotic species, is a substance that can act as both an acid and as a base. So, take a look at step one step one we have h2so4 which is our acid and the conjugate base is hso4 minus so in step one h hso4 minus x as a base take a look at step two in step two hso4 minus donates a proton to become so4 2 minus it acts as an acid so clearly it can act as both an acid and a base so what do we refer to that as it is an amphalite so the answer to 7.4 we have hso4 minus let's take a look at 7.5 and impure sample of potassium hydroxide pellets with a mass of 11.2 grams is added to 0.09 mole of sulfuric acid with a volume of 600 centimeter cube it reacts according to the balance equation given below there we go and then 7.5.1 calculate the initial ph of the sulfuric acid used in this reaction okay so what is the ph of the sulfuric acid used it ionizes to form 2h plus plus so4 2 minus s I demonstrated below you will see in just a few minutes well few seconds probably why I'm doing that so let's take a look at the given information 
we have the number of moles of sulfuric acid and the volume we can find the concentration right we want to find the concentration so that we can use it to find the concentration of h plus and therefore find the ph so we'll say that concentration is number of moles divided by volume number of moles 0 0.09 the volume is 600 centimeter cube divided by 1000 in order for us to convert it to decimeter cube we will get 0 0.6 so 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.6 that is 0 0.15 so we have 0 0.15 moles per decimeter cube so as we can clearly see from this equation h2so4 is to h plus we have one is to two so if the concentration of h2so4 is 0 0.15 the concentration of h plus will be 0 0.15 multiplied by 2 which is 0 0.3 so we have the concentration of h plus ph is equals to minus log of h plus so we're going to have minus log of 0 0.3 being equals to so minus log 0 0.3 0 0.52 so the ph is 0 0.52 there we go we have the initial ph of the acid in the reaction Seven point five point two. The percentage purity of the potassium hydroxide pellets used is eighty percent. Calculate the number of moles of pure potassium hydroxide that react with H2SO4. Right. The mass of the impure sample is eleven point two. We want to calculate the number of moles of pure potassium hydroxide. The question we're asking ourselves is: What is eighty percent of eleven point two? So we have the mass of pure, which will be 11.2 multiplied by 80%. Right. So 11.2 multiplied by 80% is 8.96 grams. So this is the mass of potassium hydroxide. This is, that is the mass of the pure potassium hydroxide. So with this mass, we can then find the number of moles with ease. The mass is 8.96. The molar mass of potassium hydroxide is 56. And if you put that in your calculator, you shall get 0 0.16 moles. So these are the number of moles of potassium hydroxide that react with H2SO4. Okay, 7.5.3. Determine which reactant is in excess and hence state whether the final solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. Right. What a beautiful question. Um, let's take a look. The number of moles of H2SO4 that we have that we have is 0 0.09. The number of moles of potassium hydroxide that we have is 0 0.16. These are the number of moles that we have. So let's perform a test. If these number of moles of H2SO4 are to react completely, how many number of moles of potassium hydroxide would be required? All right. So let me show you how we tackle this. So the number of moles of H2SO4 is to the number of moles of KOH. That is 1 is to 2. We are getting that from the reaction, the balancing coefficients. So if 0 0.09 of H2SO4 is to react, we would need 0 0.18 moles of potassium hydroxide, right? So these are the number of moles that we need for H2SO4 to react completely. But as you can see, what we have is less than that. So that tells us that KOH is our limiting reactant. So H2SO4 is in excess right so if h2so4 is in excess then the final solution should be acidic there we go